Hey, how's it going everybody? Kevin is here and hope you're all having a great day. So today we're gonna go over a few workflow tips and tricks on the Roland Phantom keyboard here. So without further ado, let's get this going. Oh, and by the way, if this is your first time on my channel, uh, consider subscribing to the channel uh, where we do a lot of personal development videos on my weekly show, KL Experience. A lot of tutorial tips and trick type videos not too different than what we're about to go through today and just a lot of other positive energy and positive vibes so without further ado let's get this going let me get some tips and tricks going on with this keyboard all right let's go okay so the first thing that I want to share with you guys is a very important um, sound that was included in the Phantom in one of the expansion packs that came out uh, EXZ15 expansion to be exact. So if we go over to our electric piano sounds, we're gonna go to single tone, we're gonna go to electric pianos, right? And from here, if we go into electric pianos two, and we change, we have to of course have this installed, so make sure you guys know how to install uh, the expansions. But once you install the expansions, if you have expansion 15, a specific sound to note I'm going to read you something that my buddy uh, Neil Gowans on uh, the Facebook group um, included. It says, something of note that came with EXZ15 expansion, JD8 Crystal EP. That is this one right here. Um, sound number 70 in the pack. This is sound number 13 from the JD800 called Crystal Roads. I have been told of people buying the JD800 just for that sound. So that got me excited because I thought to myself, okay, I wouldn't, maybe I didn't know how valuable this sound is here. So what I'm gonna, what I would do anytime I find a really important special sound like that, I would go into um, the rating section here and I'm just gonna rotate this up. This is a very important sound, so I'm, I wanna be able to find it easily. And from here, if we go into playing something. <laughs> is an amazing amazing sound especially for a keyboard slash piano player like myself um, I love the way that sounds so that's the first tip that I want to share with you guys okay so the second tip I want to share with you guys is uh, the following so say if we have we're gonna go back to uh, back to the home screen oh, up here. So say if we're here and we have a, a sound that we really like. So this sound that we really like, this is, I just turned the other, other sounds down. So we have a piano sound here, right? We have a... So I'm like, okay, I like that sound. Now, any, I'm gonna go to a different sound for a second. And when we go to the rhythm pattern, we know that the rhythm pattern has a rhythm group up top. We know it has a drum kit in the middle and then the different sections for the rhythm. So I'm just gonna hit one and you can hear how this sounds. So we can change this to different you know, sounds. So I'm gonna play it again. So we can do all that. We can also leave the same rhythm, but change the tone. So, same rhythm, but just a different drum kit. Now, the second tip is that when we have a scene that we like, whether it was one that was already on the device, on the keyboard, or if it's one that we have made ourselves, um, specifically, I guess right now, I'm more so talking about the ones that are on the keyboard already. If we have a sound that we like, but maybe we don't like the default rhythm that, that can't, comes attached to every single scene. So what I, what I thought would be a good idea and very, very helpful for me is 
I went ahead and, and we'll talk about these starred scenes in just a moment, but I went ahead and uh, changed the rhythm pattern along with the volume, along with the uh, tempo, and the kit and everything basically about the rhythm pattern to that scene, and then I saved it. So now when I turn the keyboard on, by default, the very first, um, the first scene here has a different rhythm pattern assigned to it than what would come with it by default. So if I go here and I play it, let's see how this one sounds. Totally different. So now I can I can vibe out to this and you know. tip and then a uh, extra tip uh, let's say 2a and 2b 2b tip is if if the volume is too loud here and we're we're not in this screen when we're in this screen we can change the volume by tapping that and rotating this we can change the volume to what we want or we can change it down here the level and that's going to change the loudness of the drum kit so we're at 10 really low really loud so the way it turns out is that the drum kit, the rhythm patterns are all assigned, and I didn't realize this, but they're all assigned to zone number 10, which means that we do not have to be here in order to change that uh, rhythm pattern. So if I go back here and I'm playing it, but we're not in the screen, and I want to change the volume, we can go to our zone 10 over here, and we can change this. And this also changes the rhythm pattern level, which was super helpful for me because I'm more used to change using this to control volume and things like that, right? The next tip is a little bit about sort of management. So I use this keyboard a lot for producing and I have a lot of different beats and song ideas on here. So instead of having the way that they have it by default, section A has, it's color coded. So you have A and then you have, uh, I'm sorry, you have red and then you have yellow and then you have purple. Yellow are, are like the patterns. And these are like the sounds. Those are the reds, and then the uh, purples are like the uh, full songs. But what I did is section D, if you hit the enter button here, we go to our bank section D. Section, section D by default is fully blank. Um, it's gonna say all initial scenes here, but I went ahead and stored all of my uh, beats that I made on section D. And the reason I did that is because I know that whenever I wanna play different beats that I have kind of on here already, I can go right to section D and I'll have everything there. I don't have to kind of sift around or anything like that. So if I go into something like this and hit, well actually not that one, let's go to this, let's go to this one. idea but I have my beats set I, I love some of the stuff that I made a lot of the stuff I made on here I can vibe out to it for hours on end and I have but my beats are here and what I also kind of notice is that section C they have set up as your you know different sound menus so if you go to piano sound here for section C you change <laughs> Right? These are all different sounds that, they, that they're saying. These are like popular um, sounds that you might want to consider because there's so many more than what's here. But they have like, I think, eight different, if you go to zone view, they have like eight different uh, pianos that are set there. And then if we go back, we go to string menu, for example. So string, um, what about two? What about three? 
So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using section C onward, right? There's a whole bunch more. Look at all these different scenes for section C. So these are going to be once I start getting into this keyboard and, and having scenes for uh, live performances, not just the beats, but more so uh, layers and splits and all those types of things where I can play in a live performance. That's what's going to be stationed on section C. And for me, it just kind of makes sense that that things will be situated that way. So they're much easier to find. So another pretty cool tip here is if we go to a uh, single tone, this is more so I would say beneficial for like the 88 key versions or maybe even the 76. You might get away with it on the six, on the 61 key as well, but it's basically for the really high, really low, let's say really low octaves. Say if we wanted to assign just two or three or two notes, a, di a total different sound. Um, and you'll see what I mean by a sound, more so a special effect. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new scene like we're like we're doing right now. I'm going to change. I'm going to change here and I'm going to change the range to not there, but this one to. So turn that off. So now scene or zone one. These two don't work with zone one. Okay, now we're going to go to zone two. Zone two has everything set up with it, but we want to go to zone two. I'm going to turn everything off on zone two except for, except for these two. So let's go. So here. So what the purpose of doing this is, is now if we go into zone two and we go to special effects, and uh, we go to sound effects and we go to, I think it's called chimes, wind chimes. So now what we have here, we can have some type of a, 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 a layer or a, a split set up such that we can be playing some music and we have to turn both on like this. So something like that, whatever sound effect you like for, for what it, whatever it is that you're playing, but you can assign those over there and kind of mix up your performance a little bit with that. So the next one has to do with the sound. This was kind of major to me. So the sounds that come on here, the scenes by default for keyboard players like myself, it was kind of hard for me to kind of get into some of these sounds like dark edge. Let's see what this sounds like. That's actually not too bad, but what about this one? So a lot of these sounds are very ambient and meaning that they change and evolve as you're playing. And that's cool for scores and things like that. But if you're doing a live performance, I don't want that necessarily happening with my live performances. Uh, I want something that's more about the keys and um, different cool sounding, cool sounds for keys and things like that. So this would not work for me if I was on the fly and I wanted to just experiment with different sounds and play a song that I know with, you know, on the keys, but it sounds like this. <laughs> not going to work. This is more for chords. This is more for, you know, this. And that sounds really cool when you know what it's what it's being used for. So, a couple different things here. What I did was I went ahead and went th I went through not all yet. I'm still kind of in the process, but I went through every single seen and or the ones that I've gone through so far and I went ahead and one starred anything that I feel like I really like on the first listen and I didn't just play them but I played them and I paid it paid close attention to what was active and what was de deactive what do I mean by that this first scene for example pad and pad and piano um <laughs> going on what if I turn everything else down except for channel one what does channel one sound like okay that's just that now what about 
this is pad and piano layer. These are four different pads. What if you don't want all four of them? What if you only want one pad with it? Okay, well, let's see how this sounds. So we're playing and I'm changing stuff as I'm playing. That was a major, major sort of breakthrough for me to say, just because the sound is not something that I think is amazing on first listen, it doesn't mean that I, can, I can't do things with it. Maybe this sound, the number channel number two, there's a lot going on there. This is not gonna be something that a piano or keyboard player might really enjoy because you can't play that quick with it, right? These are more for chords and, and kind of building stuff, but maybe this comes in on the last note of a measure to kind of give it some movement, you know? So what if, what if we had what we were just doing? kind of include that on the last one. So that would be the next tip is to go through all your sound, careful, take your time and just enjoy it. Enjoy the really, really, um, really talented and intelligent people who put this together. Um, there's a lot, a lot to offer with the, the, the uh, scenes that are on here. And you'll be surprised at, at some of these things on here, right? So what about this one, Ember Glance? Let's listen to what this sounds like. going on here too so we can go to zone view and zone view is helpful because zone view, zone view tells us okay well I see that channel 3 and channel 4 are both on the entire keyboard so channel 3 and channel 4 are both on the entire keyboard so let's say let's see what 3 sounds like that's interesting I let go still doing something I'm gonna come down what about four? So four is just, right? Okay, bring that down. What about five? Five is over here, should be nothing. Oh no, is five? Yeah, five is nothing over here. Five looks like it's just in the middle of the keyboard. So this is a very complex thing going on here, right? What about six? Six is only on the high part. So I haven't gotten into making a whole bunch of my own complex scenes yet, but I'm going to get into that for sure. But right now it's kind of like they have, this is so intricate. What's interesting to me is saying, how can I use something like this, this whole thing? And how can I make something that sounds interesting from what, you know, I would consider to be a, this is a pretty com complex, you know, thing going on. So I would, I might consider just playing some chords that I know and, uh, like, so right away guys in real time this is an example of one that i didn't star before but I'm gonna I'm gonna give this an edit. I'm gonna give this a star rating because I like the way that sounds. That sounds so complicated and different, and so it's just fun going through these. So don't be like me and just run through them and then be like, oh man, like as a keyboard player, there's only a handful of these. Like the ones that sound like that that are good for keyboard. This is concerto. So this is like a piano with some other stuff going on. to zone view and let's look at what else is happening strings so we can
So we can do things. We can do things by just experimenting with what's there. So super excited about that. And I'm, I'm actually looking forward to going through some more of these on my own because I'm still maybe only about 20%, 30% in uh, with the different scenes on here. The last thing that I want to talk about is something that I hadn't used really that much before, but I just discovered that this was here and I said to myself, I need to kind of start using this a little bit. And because what would happen is I, I might be doing a Facebook or Instagram live playing some beats that I have on here and vibing out. But then I don't really know what's where and everything is not necessarily organized the right way. This is before I put everything in the in the D section, like I mentioned. But um, you can do something even easier. You can have kind of like a set list type of a thing going on here. What do I mean by that? I mean that if we go to chain, let's go. No. So this thing here says what Kevin's top beats. So this is chain number one, and these are all, you know, initial chains here. But the idea behind a chain, and again, some of you may know this already, but hopefully hopefully this is reaching someone with the keyboard that's never used a chain before. Um, that was me for, for quite a while. But as you can see, all these light up here, right? And what happens with the chain mode is we can go into each of these 16 uh, slots here, which correspond to each of these 16 buttons, and it allows us to be able to assign a scene to each button. Why is that helpful? Why is that useful? Because now I can press one of these and I can go right away to a scene that I want to go to. So I can exit now and I'm here. And so I might hit play. And you see how this is playing a beat that I have stored at slot number eight. Pretty cool. What if I just press another button? Let's see what happens jumps all the way to a new scene. It jumps to my so amazing scene. Hit play. What happens when we hit number two? Jump to another beat. Hit play. So that is pretty major to me because now we can have this set up in a way where, say if I'm doing a live, I, I've been doing a lot of Reddit lives, um, which are just quite incredible. Uh, I'm gonna do a video on that soon. But we're doing a live, for example, and I'm like, okay, this first section, maybe I just wanna rock out with some of my beats and I wanna you know, mute different sections and make it sound kind of dynamic and stuff. Okay, good, we're good with that. Now also, what if we wanted to go create a new scene? So we're gonna hit enter there. I'm gonna edit this and maybe we'll rename this, uh, you know, favorite. And I kind of like being, let's see, fave. I thought shift would just leave it shift for one button, but it doesn't. Favorite sounds. Okay, so this, hmm? Oh, you have to, okay. It's like shift acts like a caps lock. Okay, so favorite sounds. So I can do that. Now say if I was here and I wanna select scene, so I want to assign to this first slot, not a beat, but rather, I think, can I hit enter? No, I can't. Okay, let me see how we can do this. So I want to select scene. Oh, here we go. These are the banks right here. Look at that. Perfect. So we go here and say if I like that, I want I want that to be my piano uh, pad to be there. And then say if I also, you know, I might consider like maybe the first eight are more keyboard sounds and maybe the last eight are going to be more like... Uh, like um, string and like pad and evolving sounds or something. So let's do a couple of these. Let's go select scene. And uh, I think if I press, well, let's see, if I press that. Yeah, so it plays it for us right away. So I might, I might put this on number two. I meant to do, okay, so I have to actually, so you see, I'm still on one. So I need to do that, and then you need to hit this button to go to your next one, and then select scene. Okay, so now I might do dark edge there. Okay, and then next, I might come back in here and experiment. So you get the idea, but this allows us to I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to write this for now. Kevin's favorite sound. I'm going to go through this on my own time and maybe on the next video I'll share with you, you know, 16 slots that I have here. And why this is so important, guys, is because a couple different things. We talked about the rhythm pattern. So say if we are in the chain mode 
And let's see what happens when we go to rhythm pattern here. So this one is not set for a rhythm pattern, but say if we are in chain mode and we come to, we want this sound. This is our piano sound. So we can be vibing out. And I think if I hit play, it, it won't work. I think you still need, well, actually, you know what? With regards to the rhythm pattern, I'm just thinking about something kind of on the fly. Let's talk about it. I might consider changing the pad mode for the sounds to rhythm pattern. And it's already set that way, as a matter of fact. So now what this means is, and I love this keyboard. I'm just learning something on the fly here. Now what this means is, is that that original sort of slower, nicer sounding rhythm pattern that I like, I can just hit this. And this is gonna play me in four measures. And then I suspect blue is gonna, or number two is gonna hit up. idea um you can do that and i can just have a set list ready to go to jump to where i need to go rather than searching for it that's a huge deal for me as being someone who's getting into doing live stuff i bought this keyboard with the intentions of doing making beats making music on it and then you know putting it to on my spotify soundcloud and all that stuff by the way if you're interested i'm going to put some links to my website and uh and which, which has uh links and hyperlinks to like where my music is on SoundCloud and, and iTunes and all that good stuff, Apple Music. But um, I am doing live performances with this thing now, and it's so incredible to go to, to do a virtual live performance, spend an hour on Reddit or on Facebook, and being able to just vibe out and perform for an audience, a virtual audience, um, is, is something I didn't expect to enjoy so much. And man, it's so much fun. It's really, really a great thing. That's everything that I wanted to share, guys. So I'm, I'm planning on doing a series of these videos and just some more workflow tips and things as I kind of continue to learn it. But I felt like with those um, handful of, of workflow suggestions and tips that I can provide for you guys, these are ones that I didn't know right away. I kind of took a little bit of a little bit of time for me to learn, and it's kind of changed things for me. And as you guys saw, just as as I'm recording this, I still kind of. Um, kind of learn some new things and stuff as well. Like this is going to be unbelievably useful. Like I'm going to go ahead and put these scenes on here straight away. Like 16 awesome keyboard-esque type sounds. I'll probably do it that way rather than like nothing be ambient, just all different keyboard sounds and assign a nice rhythm pattern to each of them and have the rhythm pattern, have these trigger the rhythm pattern and I can do 16 totally different sounding performances or... I'm, I'm excited. I got a big smile on my face right now. Um, in case you can't see and you want to see my face, let me just come down here and just wave. What's up, guys? How you doing? Uh, I don't know if you're able to see me or not, but that's okay. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, um, definitely leave a comment below. Let me know if you enjoyed it. If you, if you want to see more videos like this, definitely uh, let me know in the comment se section. Uh, leave a like on the video as well if you enjoyed it. And consider subscribing to my channel. Um, I have a weekly show called KL Experience, short for Kevin Allen, on music production, on personal development. And I'm going to be putting out a lot more content on that particular playlist, as well as different tutorials and tips and tricks on the different music equipment um, that I use, including, of course, the Roland Phantom. So if, this, if that's something that you're interested in, consider joining me by subscribing. And I really hope you all have a great rest of the day. And by the way, this is the second time that I had to do this video. The first time I recorded it with a ring light. It was my first time using a ring light for um, with the top down. And right on the screen, it was a huge uh, ring. And you couldn't even see anything. And I'm trying to convince myself that I, I still could use that somehow. I'm like, you know what? Let me just do another one. And this one came out better. It was like the, the first one was a dry run. This one, I'm more excited about the stuff that I shared. And uh, yeah, so get to it, enjoy guys, and I will talk to you guys all later.